The ability to accurately tune your violin is the foundation of a successful career. While plucking your violin strings and tuning them is the easiest way to learn how to tune your violin, especially if your violin isn't set up properly, bowing the strings while tuning them not only helps to equalize the tension below the bridge and above the nut, so that your strings stay in tune much longer. It allows us to hear when we really do attain that perfect fifth between the strings, which produces a far better sound than otherwise possible. The biggest challenge for most students, especially small children and the elderly, is that it's awkward and they struggle to gain the strength and dexterity necessary. Yet, when your violin pegs are properly fitted and adjusted to the correct angles, bowing and tuning becomes easy within just a few days, even for the smallest child. Because when your pegs are set to their proper angles, tuning is no longer awkward. And by using the proper grip for each of the pegs, the amount of strength actually needed is drastically reduced. So, let's begin. The proper grip for the A string looks like this with the peg grasped firmly between the middle finger and the thumb and the index finger placed on the opposite side of the scroll on the volute. This opposing finger allows us to apply as much pressure as we need to hold the peg in place after we let go. And if the peg gets too tight, the edge of the middle finger is used to apply outward pressure to loosen the peg. We tune the A string by dropping the pitch slightly and then bringing it back up until it perfectly matches the reference pitch. If you don't have a tuner, I have included videos with the sound of a grand piano and a church organ playing A440. And remember that none of your pegs ever need to rotate more than 20 or 30 degrees during the entire tuning process, unless you're putting on a new string or a string has come loose. How loudly you play while tuning your strings is determined by how loudly you plan on practicing or performing on stage. One of the greatest mistakes is for a performer to tune very quietly, then go out on stage and have their instrument go out of tune the first time they play forzando. The proper grip for the D string looks like this, with the peg grasped firmly between the index finger and the thumb, with the little finger on the opposite side of the scroll on the volute, which applies pressure. The ring finger can also be placed on the opposite side with the little finger, yet it's usually kept on the same side as the peg to enable us to loosen the peg if it becomes too tight. Yet, choose whatever is the most comfortable for you and for the size of your hand. 
The goal on the D string is to achieve a perfect fifth with the A string. We do this by dropping the pitch ever so slightly and then raising the pitch back up until the dissonant beat dissipates, <laughs> or in plainer terms, until the warbling and sourness go away and the tone becomes smooth, full, and pleasant. On a fine instrument, this is also when it becomes slightly louder and literally feels like it's coming alive. <laughs> While first learning how to tune your violin to perfect fifths, make it a point to lower the string enough to really hear the dissonant beat, or the warble, before bringing the string back up to pitch. That way, as the sound of your violin transforms from irritating to wonderful, you will remember the feeling better, and there will be no question when your string really is in tune. <laughs> the G peg is almost identical to the D, except that the ring finger always remains on the same side as the peg, and the hand is opened up and positioned at a slightly different angle. The goal on the G string is to achieve a perfect fifth with the D string. So you can see how important it really is to get the D string as accurate as possible. And once again, we drop the pitch slightly, and we want to hear the warble again, and then bring it back up until the tone is pure and smooth. The proper grip for the E string is almost the same as the A except the hand is held at a slightly different angle and the index finger rests against the back of the D-string peg for a more compact grip because the E-string has the highest pitch and the most tension, making it the most difficult string to tune. Because of this, as well as the slightly better tone that usually comes with a Hill-style fine tuner. Almost all fine violins have one. Because of this, the E string peg doesn't get used very much, and this is why you should always push in on the E string peg a little bit harder than all the others, and why many musicians initially tune their E string while plucking it And then they finish tuning the E string while bowing and using the fine tuner. And when you're finished, double check that your bridge is still leaning back at the proper angle. And that the A string is still in tune. and that the D, G, and E strings are all still at perfect fifths. Because as each string is tuned, especially if the pegs were rotated down way too far during the tuning process, or if you just play around with them too much, like I have while making this video. It can pull the top of the bridge forward or distort it, which pulls the other strings out of tune. On the other hand, it's amazing how well a violin will stay in tune if you simply check your bridge once a week and only rotate the pegs a small amount when you're tuning which will get easier to do the more you practice. 
So if there's any doubt whatsoever, make sure that the A string is still on pitch one last time. And then verify that each of your other strings are still at perfect fifths. Because your violin will thank you for it. And then be able to give you the most beautiful tone possible.